lovely people! Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be learning hand stitches every beginner and non-beginner should know because what do you do when you don't have a sewing machine? You will soon find out. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe down there. And I don't know. You should grab your fabric. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't. Maybe I just go back to ironing. <laughs> so grab your fabric and your needle and don't forget the thread. And let's get started! So this is my fashion studio. My name is Farron. Welcome back to the sewing corner. Hand stitched with love. Get ready because we're gonna do some hand stitching. These are pretty basic ones. But everybody should know these to get started. So the tools you will be using to choose <laughs> the tools we will be using today: your thread, the fucking basing thread, okay? It's fucking silk. <laughs> silk finish is the best for basting because when you iron it, it doesn't leave any marks. And if you want to strengthen your thread, add some beeswax. Next. The thimble. Actually, I kind of hate the metal thimble, so I made my own. It's made out of leather. This is super easy to make. If you'd like to see it in a tutorial, leave me a comment below. Choose a needle that matches your fabric and your thread because it's really important if you have very fine fabrics, you really shouldn't be using a big needle because you would just be making very big holes in your fabric. So don't do that. Your clippers, these things. As you know, I love these things. Also, don't forget your fabric. We kind of need that. If you would like to see what else is in my kit, go check out the first video and I will tell you all about it. Let's get started. I think I just dropped all of my needles. <laughs> And we're back. We will be working on seven stitches today, starting with the even basting stitch. It is generally used for long seams on any fabric and for areas that demand close control. This is really boring for you. It's a basic stitch. Grab some thread. Okay, this is very important to really only use one thread. Not two, a lot of people do this. They put the thread together and they knot it. That is a very common mistake. That is not correct. The reason why is because this end, oh shoot, this end doesn't have a knot. So if you make a mistake, you can always pull it through and take out your basting stitches really quickly. If you had knotted both ends, that means that you're just gonna be stuck and you're gonna have to cut it and then start all over and it's just gonna be a mess. We're gonna do some even basting stitches. Now put your thread through the needle, not the end, right here, lick your finger. There's a close up. Get that going on there. Then there, we're gonna baste this thing like nobody's basted before. You can either not at the beginning or you can skip the knot and just do a back stitch. The spacing stitches evenly a quarter of an inch long and a quarter of an inch apart. Hence the even stitch. So go into your fabric quarter of an inch and then quarter of an inch apart. And you really just do that all the way around your piece. That's it. Once you get to the end, you can either tie a knot in your fabric or you can just do a back stitch. Number two, uneven basting stitches are used for marking or for holding pieces together. So it really is just an uneven basting. So you can go in and out, in and out. Keep stitches fairly loose to avoid any puckering because you don't want that. And then once you get to the end, tie a little knot into your fabric, picking up some thread, going into the, the little loop, 
and pulling. That's it. Diagonal basting stitch, or known as the tailor basting. The diagonal basting stitch is used for holding any interlinings, interfacings, any padding. This is normally used in bespoke suits. Bespoke suits. So if you open up a suit, you'll see it. There's like all diagonal stitching down. It's gorgeous. So you take your thread, do your little knot at the beginning, and then what you do is you go straight down. Make sure your needle is going down the fabric at a right angle towards you, making a diagonal stitch. So once you get to the end, you can either tie a knot or you can do a back stitch. Next, we are doing the back stitch. Very easy. It's basically a basting stitch, but you go back. Okay, back stitch, back stitch. The strongest hand stitch ever. It really is just a quarter inch ahead, and then you go an eighth back. Back stitching every stitch because you want to make that thing really strong and durable. Durable. Oh, look at that! Look how strong that is! Wow! Next. What else we got? What else we got? A hem stitch. It's a little difficult for some people. Here I have a little bodice that needs to be hemmed. So make your little hem, turn, roll it in there, and get started by picking up a thread on the wrong side of your fabric and then moving to the rolled edge of your fabric. You really only see like a little pin prick on the other on the wrong side of your fabric. But on the right side it has to be invisible. This blind stitch is very good for hemming pants, a dress, a skirt, whatever. Anything that you want to hem that has to be blind hemmed, this is a really good stitch for that. And it's all tucked away underneath the roll so you don't even see it, which is why it's called blind hem. Pretty simple. This is how it looks. Oh, pretty. Next, we're doing, we're doing the overcast stitch. Yeah or also known as the whip stitch. If you don't want a lot of seam allowance and you just want pieces to lay flat, this stitch is really good for that. It literally is taking two pieces and going over. I would say space them pretty close together so you have a nice tight seam. It's kind of meditative until you sew your finger. I'm gonna give you a bonus stitch. It's called the catch stitch, or in Italian, they call it punta di strega, which means the point of the witch. <laughs> it's really cool because it looks like a witch's hat. So say that you have a hem on the bottom of your jacket and you're going to be hand stitching the lining at the bottom. This is the stitch that holds up your hem. Tie your little knot right there. They say you need to move from left to right. Even though I'm right-handed, you have to move left to right. Trust me on this. So moving from right to left at the top of your fabric and moving horizontally and you go down to the bottom of the roll and then back to the top. So that's 
it for today. You can... I don't even know what I'm saying. Yay!